everyone welcome back to my channel this is natalie with natalie's closet and i'll be right back with local yarn shop tour number two at four pearls yarn shop as well as let's talk bfl i'll be back in a sec So welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and we have a lot to cover today to include the announcement of last week's subscriber of the week winner, which I didn't mention in the introduction, but we are going to do that today. Uh, but first I want to welcome all of our new subscribers and of course, welcome back everyone else. Thank you so much for all of your support. I so very much appreciate it and love that you guys keep coming back to watch my video. So thank you very much for that. If you happen to be new and you like the video and are interested in possibly joining i would love it if you'd hit the subscribe button down below as well as a notification bell next to that and if you'd be willing to give this video a thumbs up i would very much appreciate that as well as comment and share thank you so so much uh so let's see what are we going to start with of course we're going to start with the tour um i have several notes about the store that i want to share with you and then we'll go ahead and do the tour and then I'm going to show you some stuff I received while there, as well as then talking about BFL yarn at the end. I am going to say that I complete, I cannot find any of the written notes or the printed notes that I have about BFL as super wash, but it's essentially the same as Merino. But if I, if I find them and then realize there's something different that I wanted to share with you, I will include that with next week's um let's talk but okay my eye is really starting to bother me but um anyway so on to four pearls oh wait first remember this week is uh, today's the first day for this week's subscriber of the week now i'm not sure if i'm going to be taking down christmas stuff uh tomorrow or if i'm going to go ahead and keep it up until wednesday i'm not sure but um, I think you'll be able to notice the change when it does happen. So, cause as I told you guys, I was probably keeping Christmas up until the 20th since I do celebrate Christmas, January 7th, um, or did celebrate Christmas then. And then I was going to turn it into a winter scape and until the end of the month. So I'll keep you guys guessing as to when the change is going to happen. But, uh, Today is the first day for that. So on to uh, Four Pearls Yarn Shop, which is in Winter Haven, Florida. And you know what? I forgot to look up exactly how far it is. I like giving you guys distance. I think it's like something like um, 80 miles-ish away, roughly. I'm not sure. I'll put it here. I'll look it up. But um not too far. Uh, this was the second place I did. I'm doing, I'm introducing you to the stores as I visited them. So this is the second shop that I've gone to, although I have already recorded five tours. I am going to be doing two more, I believe this weekend, and then it's going to be based on our schedule as far as if we plan on taking any day trips between now and week seven, which would be the last tour. And then whether or not I visit any other stores that are a bit further, which would be like 150 miles or 120 miles and further. But we'll see because I'm really enjoying this and I'm loving meeting all these new people. I mean, it's just been so awesome. I've been having such great experiences between the people, the customer service, the knowledge, the just everything has been wonderful. So I'm really excited about that. And I apologize for rubbing my eye every so often, but it seems like whatever's in my eye keeps moving. But if I have to pause it to rinse my eye out, I will. But until then, let's just keep going. So I am going to give you a bunch of information about the store. Some of it I did include in the video, although I don't know if I was completely accurate. So I think I will be covering that now. Uh, but that's because when I walked into the store, uh, Andrea was giving me information about how the name came about, the store, etc. And I was trying to remember it all because I didn't bring my notes. I wasn't expecting that because I really didn't know much about the store. And so I was trying to remember it all and then do the video. And and uh, it was, I was like, oh crap, I hope I don't forget some stuff. So I'm going to cover it. Now there is a lot of information on their channel as well. I mean, I'm sorry, not their channel, their website as well. So not only will I post the, or yeah, post the link to their website, I'm also going to do it to the um, page that has a bunch of like um, 
Q&A type of a thing or frequently asked questions. Uh, that'll be in the description box below as well as the pinned comment down below uh, so that you guys can check it out. I picked out the stuff that I think would be probably what you would want to know as well as things that you may be interested in knowing, but there is a lot of other information. So there's a lot about this store and I think it's really cool. I hope I picked the right stuff to talk about right now, but um, I may have to take a sip every so often because my throat's been really dry and I don't know why. So I hope you guys don't mind. Um, but of course my lipstick's going to come off too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I do give the links to these videos to the stores once, uh, they are uploaded. They've all requested that I do that so that they can see. I mean, they're all very, very much appreciative of doing these videos. And I explained to them, you know, I don't have a large channel, but I'm very passionate about supporting small businesses and word of mouth is the way small businesses really survive the most. Uh, so, you know, even if I'm only able, even if only five people can get something out of this from me, if those five people tell five people, then it's the snowball effect and, and the word gets out. And even though I may not have a lot of people that live in some of these areas, if any, they may have family, friends, uh, coworkers that have family or friends, etc. And it may just be something that you didn't even realize was a few miles or you know however many miles that you would be willing to travel away from you and now you can you may be interested in checking it out so anyway as i mentioned the name of the store is four pearls yarn shop now the owners of the store have four children which are their pearls in this case Pearls, P-U-R-L-S. <laughs> uh, their names are now, I believe it goes girl, boy, girl, boy, uh, but their names are Aspen, Emma, John Paul, and Thomas. And they basically grew up in the store and they are all very much involved in the business in one way or another. Uh, Aspen is the oldest and, I, and then I believe it goes John Paul, then Emma, then Thomas. Uh, now, Aspen and Emma are the primary dyers for Emma's yarn, and I will go more into that in just a second. And then John Paul runs the Love and Leche, which is, which are hand poured lotion bars that are, of course, sold in the store. Um, I have also seen them in at least one, if it wasn't maybe two, of the five shops that I've now um, visited. And from my understanding, this was a, a shop or a store that was, I believe, in New Mexico. And then um, John Paul took it over or bought it out. And now he runs the business. And it's really kind of, they come in um, little tins. I didn't, I don't have one, but they come in little tins. You can find it on the website. But anyway, that is how the name Four Pearls came up is because they have these children and they are all big parts of the business. Now, um, where did I put the rest of that information? Oh yeah, it was in my head. <laughs> okay, because now I actually remember the story. But Four Pearls is the flagship for Emma's Yarn. Now, I know I myself have found Emma's Yarn on multiple online small business um, shops or stores. And I have seen them now out of the five tours that I've taken, of course, Four Pearls. And then I know, um, okay, I don't want to give you the names of the other stores yet. So I know in at least two other stores, I've seen her yarn. And have seen it, like I said, on different websites. Now, Emma's yarn, beautiful yarns, very beautiful yarns, multiple bases, um, obviously in all the yarn sizes and her colorways are unbelievable. But, um, and I'll show you some Emma's yarn after the tour. But I would love to know if any of you have tried Emma's yarn or if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, the way Emma's yarn started, Emma is their third child. When she was 15, which was just three years ago, but when she was 15, she, okay, she was homeschooled, first of all. When she was 15, she was doing a prod or um, an assignment on proportions, and she decided to dye 10 hanks of yarn. So again, remember, all of these kids have been, ha grew up in a yarn shop. So 
uh, she decided to do that and she brought them into the store and little by little customers were seeing it loving it and asking her can you make me more of this colorway enough for a sweater or whatever the case was and so then she went back to her formula and realized that she could recreate these these colorways and so that is how she started and she fell in love with dyeing and she decided to go ahead and dye more and now Emma's 18 okay three years she went from 15 to 18 her yarns now Andrea told me in the store that it was about 70 but when I was on on their website it says 90 so I'm not sure if for some reason it went down or since I was there a couple weeks ago it went up I'm not quite sure because they do keep their website up to date very very well but um, it Emma's yarn is in 70 to 90 shops local yarn shops around the country and one in the UK and I know I've seen it online in some online shops so wow really in three years she went from just trying to die or starting to die to blowing up and being in all those shops around the country that is impressive and and so awesome um sorry Miley's under my feet she's trying to get around me and I was trying to give her some space anyway she says hi to her peeps uh so they are the flagship store for Emma's Yarn. I believe they have every colorway that she currently has and of course all the different yarn sizes. Uh, but again, amazing story and amazing just everything. Now she used to dye her yarns in the back room of the store that I am doing the tour in. But now she actually bought a, um, a space or a building uh, like a street behind where the store is and it's dedicated for dyeing and her sister is her Aspen is the manager yeah uh, but they all just everybody is part of it and it's just such an awesome story I absolutely love it that I thought that was just so cool so I definitely wanted to make sure to share that with you I think I got all those details right in the video I apologize if I didn't but anyway so that's Emma's yarn flagship store for the for her of course you'll see all of them up there and they're so amazing okay anyway on to the rest of the information so they do free shipping for US orders over $49 uh, they also do phone and online orders they have curbside pickup uh, they will do in-person help with like stitches or pattern clarifications and they will do uh, private lessons that are available by appointment uh, they have a virtual knit night on Zoom, and um, they do accept all major credit cards and PayPal. Uh, if you were to call and order a couple of different, uh, like a couple different hanks in the same color, they will try to keep it for them all in the same dye lot, but otherwise they are hand-picked. So they do their best to make sure that they are as similar as possible, and if for some reason they're not, they will call you or they will video chat with you to show you the differences and see if you're happy with it or not. So they are so ridiculously customer service, it's not funny. And the store, ridiculous knowledge, awesome customer service. Over the phone, same thing. Email, they are like on it and they respond right away and help you in any way possible. It is really cool. I mean, that's the way it should be and small businesses tend to be that way anyway. Um, and on the website, I did notice that somebody asked, because you know how you, when I, well, with the first tour, anybody that has been in local yarn shops, oftentimes you see samples of projects made in certain yarns, a scarf, a shawl, a sweater, or whatever the case may be. And somebody had asked if the samples are, if they sell the samples. And they said that typically they do not sell them because many of them are on loan from customers but that sometimes or once or twice a year they have a sample sale or some may go into the clearance section in the back when the yarns may um, get discontinued or whatever and no longer available and if they're not pieces that are on loan from customers because a lot of customers loan their finished objects um, so that the store yeah. can have them to show as a sample uh, so if they're not from a customer and the yarn has been discontinued sometimes they'll put the the finished item in the back in the clearance section so it is sometimes possible to get the finished items but as a general rule no they're not for sale uh, let's see oh there was also a question which this is something that I know people are curious of at local yarn shops um, they've asked if they purchase the oh if 
if they will wind their yarn uh, because a lot of the yarns come in hanks and if you purchase the hank at the store absolutely no problem they will wind the yarn um but if you miley stop come on sorry <laughs> for the earthquake and oh my gosh i think she actually moved the sorry guys um i think she actually moved the tripod i'm not sure i hope i'm centered now but anyway uh that somebody asked if i didn't buy the yarn if you didn't buy the yarn from them and it is hanked they may consider winding it it depends you just need to email them with the type of yarn it is and the yardage and they will let you know if yes they will or not because not only well i'm not sure exactly what it depends on outside of sometimes yarns would be better um hand balled versus wound into a cake because in a cake once you take it off the winder it could collapse so if it happens to be that type of yarn they wouldn't do it but if it is yarn that they will wind but isn't from their store um they charge two dollars per 400 yards so that would typically be four hanks uh so just wanted to throw that out there in case you were interested if you order hanks online through them they will and it's obviously their yarn because you're ordering through them they if you request it but you have to put in the notes of your order when you place the order online they would be willing to of course wind it and send it to you in a cake uh so i like that um and then there was a question do you carry any red heart or other big box um yarns they do not carry red heart or any yarns that you would find in big boxes like walmart joann's hobby lobby there there is some more information um, I didn't get a chance to call them before doing this video to find out if they wanted me to share why on here, but feel free to go into that link that I'm going to put down below. And if you're, if you want to know why they don't carry it, um, let's see, they do have content, you know, um, they do have other options like acrylic and that type of thing. And, um, some yarns that are $5 and under, but they are known as a high quality, uh, yarn shop. Uh, they do, as far as classes, they do normally have a Knitting 101 uh, every week. I think it was every week, uh, twice a week, and a crochet class once a month. But right now with everything the way it is, uh, they are not doing that, but they are looking forward to getting back to that. They do have an area where you can sit, like it's like a living room type of a thing. You can sit and crochet or knit there, but you do have to wear a mask because the seats are not six feet apart. Uh, but they, let's see, oh, they would be happy to help you pick out a yarn over the phone. If you let them know what it is you're looking for, they would be more than happy to go and look for it and then send you pictures of via email or whatever to see if you like it. Uh, it while I was there and doing the tour, I heard her, I think maybe I had just finished the tour, but, um, I heard Andrea on the phone with a customer. It was a long time customer. But she was doing, I think, a multi like colored project and she was needing like 10 different colors. And so Andrea's like, OK, I'll go ahead and pick out a few and then I'll send it over and then let me know if that's what you want. And then we'll go from there. And if need be, they would have done it via FaceTime. I mean, it's really they are very open and willing to help. Uh, and then you can order online to pick up in the store, which, of course, helps with um, shipping if you happen to be local. Uh, let's see. Um, they are Central Florida's largest yarn shop with over 2,800 square feet of yarn. I mean, that's awesome. It's big. I was really surprised from what I, you know, walking in from the outside, I was thinking it was going to be relatively small. I walked in, I was like, I mean, I seriously think my jaw dropped. I mean, they couldn't see because I had a mask, but I seriously think that my jaw dropped. Uh, and then... Um, Oh, I did tell you it's free local or free U.S. shipping for orders over $49 and they do ship internationally. When I was there and I, they had a stack of um, padded envelopes or envelopes and boxes waiting for the mailman. And she said that the mailman comes three or four times a day. This place is hopping. And even when there was the, like the lockdown, when they were able to go back, but not actually open to the public, but when they were able to come back into the shop um, and work, she said they were so busy. I mean, they were working like almost around the clock. I mean, they were all so exhausted day in, day out because they just were having so many orders online. And I think that is awesome and amazing. I mean, 
that that's just awesome if you ask me but one thing i really really liked and i wanted to mention if you were going let's say you were visiting disney world or whatever or you wanted to fly down and specifically hold on a second guys you wanted to fly down and specifically go visit them and you're staying overnight or whatever they actually have local rates at um, the Holiday Inn in Winter Haven and the Hampton Inn in Winter Haven. Plus, they own a three-bedroom, two-bath Airbnb that you could get that sleeps eight. So I did want to throw that out there since I am doing local yarn shops for everybody that may be watching my videos. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, how often do you get a local rate at a hotel to come visit a, a yarn shop? I mean, I think that's awesome. So anyway, I think that's primarily everything I wanted to cover. You can get more information. I just thought this was really stuff that would be of most interest and I'm um, giving you, you know, as much information as I could. But now we're going to go ahead and go to the tour. So if you have any questions or if you would like me to get some more information or you don't find it on their website, but you have a question, you can email them, you can call them, you can ask me, whatever the case is. But I would love to know, and if you watched my first tour, I did say, let me know what your favorite item is or what catches your eye or whatever. Just let me know what was your favorite section, specific yarn, whatever the case is in there because you never know what may happen at any at any time so anyway i hope you enjoy the tour and i will be right back okay so as i mentioned to you guys a second ago this is four pearls and i'm just going to take a quick span of the front of the store um then the name of the store comes from the fact that the owners have four children uh, girl boy girl boy the oldest girl is the manager of Emma's yarn, which the back over here on the wall, that's all her yarns and fingering weight. And then it, this store is designed by, they are set up by weight. Um, but then the second, the son, or the second child, the second pearl, the son actually owns this business, which they have here. It's Love and Leche um, Lotion Bars, which is kind of cool. So I, of course, carry that in here. And then the third pearl, Emma, uh, she, when she was, I think it was 16, um, as a homeschool project, because she was homeschooled, um, as a homeschool project, she decided to learn how to do fractions. So a math project. Okay, here's Emma's yarns too. Um, she went ahead and dyed 10 hanks of yarn. She started with that, figuring, you know, I'll go ahead and go from here. She brought them into the store, and I guess a customer came in and said, can you make me a sweater's amount worth of this yarn? She's like, well, you know, I'll see. This is her yarn. And I know I was just online somewhere looking at it, and it's awesome. She's got several different bases, though. So um, she went ahead and she made the yarn, and then it kind of grew from there, and she started dyeing her own yarns. And selling it here at the store um and they own a dye shop it's a building i guess across the street and uh she has expanded to her yarns are in 70 stores around the country um and of course this is the backbone of it because this is you know her mom's shop um or her parents i'm sorry shop and her yarns are amazing i mean look at these are they not like incredible look at the colors you all know me all about the colors this is my favorite right here um vacy or vacay vacay why did i say vacy i looked at it wrong but this is the splendid singles 100 percent superwash merino hand dyed in florida but look at that is that not amazing anyway um so She's 18 now. 18. Her yarns are in 70 shops around the country. I mean, talk about. I mean, incredible. Incredible story. But these are a bunch of the minis. Love them too. This is actually really pretty. But anyway, so I'm just going to... You know what? I think I have this. Actually, this looks like Shandy's confetti. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Anyway, so look at this. 
Is this not stunning? Look at this. Look at that. This is um 72% kid mohair and 28% silk, I think. That's this wall right here. And they have it in the vacay. Oh, gorgeous. Talk about soft. Oh my goodness gracious, it's soft. This can be... Hmm, I wonder if this would match the vacay. But it's more of a hot pink in the vacay. Okay, anyway. So I'm just going to go around the store and show you guys everything that they carry. Or almost everything spun right around. That's kind of cool. This... I would love to get this. It is gorgeous, except I don't want to... $50 is not bad. Um, it's uh, silk and sisal. 70% silk, 30% sisal. So it's really not a bad price, but right now, not in the budget. Oh, and they have HHF. <gasps> I love HHF yarn. Love it. Love it. Love it. I think I love the label. <laughs> All right, so they've got a lot of Malabrigo. Um, and look, fibers to spin up on top of that cabinet and right here. Let me check all this stuff out. This is that um, unique yarn. That's what we saw at, um, oops, sorry. This is what we saw at Stash the other day or last week. But I mean, look at this beautifulness. This has sparkle in it. Awesome. That's knitted wit. But I mean, look at all of this gorgeousness. And they have Barocco, which you all know I love Barocco. But they have a lot of yarns I haven't heard, a lot of companies I haven't heard of. Blue Heron, Sparkle. Look at this. That is beautiful. What is this? Rayon Metallic. Rayon Metallic. Gorgeous. Now remember, if you guys have questions about any of this, leave it in the comment section below and I will address it either in the next Getting to Know You. There's Kobasi. You know, I love Kobasi too. Um, and La, I don't know if it's La Yola, I think. Buy Yarn. I love Buy Yarn. <gasps> Gorgeous. Love Buy Yarn. If you haven't worked with it, you got to. Um, but if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comment section below, regardless of what it is. And if I don't know the answer off the top of my head, I will ask or, um, and they ship worldwide, which is awesome. So I will leave, um, this wild daisy was also at stash, 38% linen, 32 silk, 30 hemp. I wouldn't say it's like scarfable. It's a little, I think the hemp makes it a little rough, but it's gorgeous. Um, what was I saying? Oh, we already saw that. So we got all this, look at these colors, beautiful. Hope I'm not hitting the um, speaker, but if I am, I apologize. There was something over here I wanted to show you guys. But anyway, yeah, so just ask whatever questions you have. I'll either answer it in the comments or respond to your comment or I will answer it in getting to know. Well, I'll do both because I'm sure other people will have similar questions. And like I said, these are their shop is um, all by um, weight. So that's how they're set up. See, like here is her worsted wool, Emma's yarn. Let me see. Is this vacay? Nope. 80s Rewind. That's another one that I was picking up a lot. Um, so it went from fingering. Now we're into worsted. That's kind of pretty. That's a Melabrigo. I can tell Melabrigo like right away. But uh, this is their area. Right now they don't have it because, you know, with social distancing and stuff. But this is where you can uh, kind of hang out and knit, crochet. Um, they've actually, the city here, I guess, doesn't look, this is Shibui. You know I love Shibui. This is the same color. See, here it's coming out almost true to color. This is like the one for my hat, except mine is worsted. Um, but... They don't allow you to park for more than, look at this, more kid mohair, I think. But this is Shibui. Kid mohair and silk. Yum. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Amazing. They only allow you to park 20 for two hours on the street, and they have a meter made that marks, look at this. This doesn't even look right. In here, it looks like royal, here it looks like just bright blue. But in real life, it's like a, oh, 
like a electric blue. Um, but they mark your tires with chalk once you, once they come around, and then you have two hours. If you're not out of here by then, you're in deep trouble. No, I'm just kidding. They don't. They but you have to move your car. See, this is blowing out. This looks hot pink in my camera, but it's more of a like fuchsia. Um, but I mean, look at this. Look at this amazingness. This is all MSDK. Wait, beautiful. Got some more, um, <gasps> Rowan. I missed this. How'd I miss it? You know, I love Rowan. Oh, wow. I love Rowan. This is felted tweed. Very cool. Sorry if my hands dry, guys, but it's worse than ever now because it's cold outside. Or cool, please. Not cold. It's 70s today. But anyway, more of her DK and the minis. And then you've got some books over here. Awesome. Um, beautiful. I love this right here. This is awesome. Forgot whose it is. Sueño Bajico. It's beautiful. So is the orange. And this I really liked. I thought it was something that was a lot softer. But I also thought it was a different brand when I looked at it without picking it up. But so anyway, this is an amazing shop. Amazing shop. And I love that this is the sorry, I didn't mean to give you like a headache there with spinning you around, but I didn't want you to have to see their boxes and stuff. So if you like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me see if I can pull their um business card out of my purse. She just gave it to me. I'll show it again. Um, it's for Pearl's Yarn Shop in Winter Haven, Florida. But you can email. Well, I she told me if I had any questions, I can email the owners. But that's their website, and they ship worldwide. And it's free shipping. I don't know if the international shipping goes for the same, but it's free shipping with, I think she said, $45 or $49. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Anyway, look at this this um, baby carriage. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, um, that's not so beautiful. All right, guys. So I'm going to do a little bit more looking around. Um, if you guys want to know more about something or if you would like me to get more information about something for you, again, let me know in the comment section below. Look at this. This is beautiful, splendid singles. 100% superwash, mino, 400 yards. Crazy beautiful color, isn't it? Is that not stunning? Oh, my goodness gracious. You guys, this is like, I've like died and gone to heaven. But you all know. You know she said that the, the pearls, or the kids, basically grew up in a yarn shop. Could that ever be a problem? Uh, no. See, here's that vacay. But this is 80% superwash, 20% silk, I think. Yeah. But look at that. I mean, is that not stunningly gorgeous? And I mean, squishy and just soft. So gorgeous. This one's pretty too. But see, it's blowing it out. It's like looking like hot, hot pink on my camera. But it's more of a, it's definitely pink. But see, this is hot pink. This is not. But looking at it that way, it comes out a little better. This one I love too. Look at that. That one is... Fame and fortune, totally, 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 totally. Oh, wait, this was another one I loved. Look, this is Mexican wedding dress. Is that not gorgeous? I mean, guys, this is so ridiculously soft. It is not funny. Like, not funny. All right, guys, so, again, let me know. Ooh, baby, look at that. Cali girl, I thought it said call girl. <laughs> yeah, I know, naughty naked hooker that's me okay for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about yeah check out older videos you'll, you'll figure it out all right guys so i'm gonna get going so i can go ahead and look around i have to leave in a few minutes to go pick up my mom because her car's in the shop and i have to drop her off look at that oh my gosh it's so guys i'm like seriously lost here this is like heaven like seriously heaven Ooh, look pom-poms 
Oh, for pom-poms. Very cool. Big bad wool. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right, guys. Anyway, look at all these bags, though. I know I keep saying goodbye, and you know I do like a 10-minute goodbye. Now I almost went to 15 minutes, but look at all these bags. i got to show you these bags up here in case I didn't show you before. These are amazing. Amazing. Look at this. Is that not awesome? These bags are absolutely stunning. I'm guessing they're handmade. At least it looks like it. They have all kinds of stuff in here. This is my happy place. Yeah, could not have said it better myself. This is a sale thing for 50% off. Kind of cool. All right. All right, guys. So we will continue the conversation about wools when I come back. I'll see you guys later. Bye. So welcome back. What'd you think? Wow. Right? I mean, seriously, I was just like, because I, and I forgot to actually do like a video clip before walking in. And I don't know why I did that, but, um, I totally forgot to do that. And, but when I pulled up, I was like, okay, I'm like, cool. It, it, this is going to be nice and quaint. I didn't, I don't remember if I had seen any, if I w looked at any pictures online, so I didn't have any expectations of anything. So I opened the door and literally I was like, Oh, wow. I mean, amazing. So anyway, as I had mentioned in um, tour number one, I may be doing something different every so often. So just make sure to let me know what your favorite part of that tour was and who knows what may happen when. I don't know. It, it's just like going to be a totally random thing if it happens at all. Am I being vague enough? <laughs> But anyway, so I wanted to show you what I have from them. Now, um, it was funny because what I got or what, yeah, um, wasn't, what I didn't think was going to be quite enough. So I reached out to them and was like, I think I'm going to, you know, well, I didn't like speak to them, but I was, I went onto their website and stuff and I'm thinking, okay, I may need more for a project. So um, when I talk about customer service, I really mean customer service because they're, and they get things together so quickly. And so I went ahead and emailed and I said, Oh my gosh, I forgot though. I, I, I specifically was picking out the Hank that had like the most hot pink. And, and so I got a response saying, don't worry. We can't, you know, cause they hand pick anything from any orders and, and, and anything that, you know, they receive. And so, uh, we picked out the one with the most hot pink. You're covered. So anyway, I did let Andrea know when I was there. Um, I believe I let her know. And I had mentioned it in an email to them that uh, with the yarn from their shop, I plan on making a project. And then I will make a dedicated video once the project is complete. I, I'll mention it on a regular video when we're talking what it is I plan on doing. But once I have... The finished object I'll do it in a dedicated video so I can show it and anything else and I'll send I'll go ahead and send them the link and and so I'm hoping that'll be good for them I haven't gotten a response yet because I just recently sent that but <clears throat> anyway I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it is now I am gonna need your help with it because I think I showed you one of the shawls it, it was worked up in like a um, like a merino nylon blend or maybe it was even the silky I'm not quite sure but then there was a section that was done in the mohair and silk. And then, <clears throat> so it wasn't like the mohair work. Well, I think it was also worked with the yarn. But then there was just a section that was just like a nice, pretty, lacy section with the mohair, which is a lace weight. And then it went back to the yarn. And so that's what I'm kind of wanting to do versus working it, working, versus working the strand of mohair with the yarn. I'm kind of thinking I want to do a shawl that has it worked in the merino and then a section in the lace weight with the mohair and then with the yarn. So if you guys have any ideas for a beautiful pattern that you think would work out that way well in crochet because the shawl, of course, that was in there was knit, not of course, but it was knit, um, I would greatly appreciate that. But check this out. It's all Emma's yarn. And uh, this is the Splendid Singles, which I love. Now the silk, the, oh my goodness, what is it? The silky something that's, I think, like 80 merino, 20 silk or, or 70, 30. I can't remember. I know I said it in the video. That one is amazingly beautiful also and ridiculously soft. But this is the um, Splendid Singles. Whoppa! 
and I showed this to you guys in on camera. This is the vacay. And I mean, look at all that pink. Look at all the pink. Look at all the pink. I think this is the one. That, yeah, this is the one they actually sent me. But totally great job with not knowing what it was that I already had. But this is, of course, Emma's Yarn Hand Dyed in Florida. Splendid Singles. Crazy beautiful color. Totally. 100% superwash merino. 400 yards. So for 1,200 I can't believe I had to count that a second time. 1,200 yards total in the merino, and it's we can recommend washing on a gentle cycle and laying to dry. Uh, but 1,200 yards of the 100% merino, which I mean is totally plenty for a crocheted shawl. But and I and honestly probably just two of the hanks would be enough. But then look at this. Oh, whoa! This is the Emma's Yarn in what, Marvelous Mohair, which is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk, and so soft, so soft. But look at that. Is that not, whoopsie, is that not awesome? I mean, so beautiful, right? So... If it if it does end up being just eight like a um a pattern for eight hundred yards, I could do one strand of the mohair with one strand of the yarn and work it that way so that it just gives it a little bit more of a softy fluffy feel. Or like I was really wanting to do was section, and I guess I could turn any shawl into that except this is a lace weight and I'm not doubling it, doubling the strands. So. I guess I could do any one where I do a section with this and then a section with this. Um, I guess I would just have to go up in hook size to kind of like, yeah, anyway, let's talk about that. All right. So if you guys have questions and you want to talk to me privately, um, either comment in here, that's fine. Or you can email me, uh, natalies.closet at yahoo.com. Or if you want to reach out on my Facebook group, which is uh, Natalie's Closet Fiber Arts Community, I'll put it across the screen. If you want to join me on Facebook, if you're not part of it already, that's fine. Let me know there or on Instagram. Whichever way you want to reach out to me, I'm totally up for that. But let's talk about that because I really want to do something special and then I'm going to go ahead and share that with them because it is going to be a crochet project. I don't. I didn't really pay attention to see if they had um, samples in crochet, uh, but you know, I, I would love to at least share with them a crochet project that I finished. Now, of course, right now I'm working on my mom's blanket. I'm not as far as I would have typically been if I was doing the six rows a day, only because when I was sick, you know, my mom. We talked about it, and I had taken basically like a week off. So I've only been working on it the last couple days regularly, uh, but going to be done for it by, um, I can't remember what day exactly we said, but uh, so that's first and foremost. And then I think the next big project I'll be working on is that project, but I'll also add a couple other things because I want to get a bunch of stuff done. Anyway, okay, so we're done with four pearls, but is there not, is their shop not amazing? I am so totally totally 100% going back there to go and hang out like when I had more have more time and I just absolutely love that shop so awesome and it's in a quaint little town it's really cute anyway okay I know I said I'm done but definitely let me know I would love to hear what your favorite you can have multiple but just let me know what your favorite things were about the shop would love to hear about it Hey guys, I'm so sorry for interrupting here and inserting this. However, I forgot to announce the subscriber of the week. I had already torn down the um, tripod and put my chair back and everything. And I was like, uh, I started editing the videos actually. And I was like, um, I forgot to do subscriber of the week. And I didn't want to have to wait to do it later in the week. So please forgive me for being so scatterbrained, but it is what it is. Today has been one of those days. So our subscriber of the week for last week is Congratulations, Donna. I am so excited for you. You don't need to send me your address. I have it. So I will get your card and stickers out to you. Thank you so much for all of your continued support and all of the prayers and everything that you always offer. I really appreciate it. And yes, 
thank you so much for understanding my crazy brain. So I did want to make sure to announce this. If you are new and you're not sure what I'm referring to every week, I do a subscriber of the week on Fridays. You let me know what changed during the week on my um, scape behind me and then on Mondays I do a drawing and then I just send you a card and a set of stickers just to say thank you so this is a way I can say thank you to one person a week at least and you know since I'm not able to do something for everybody all the time but thank you again Donna so incredibly much and I will get that out to you so on to let's talk BFL see you guys all right, so now we're going into Let's Talk BFL. Now, like I mentioned, I totally forgot, I or not forgot, I can't find my written notes or the papers I printed on BFL, Superwash BFL. From what I remember when I read through them, it, the process and, and the basic knowledge of what happens when it goes from BFL to Superwash is basically the same as merino but if i do find that there's anything really different or anything i will definitely mention it in next week's um let's talk which is going to be about alpaca uh, but i'll mention it in the beginning and also i forgot um i having gone through their website and having spoken to them about different things i kind of picked up on maybe some things you may have wanted to know about stash probably possibly so if I find any additional information I want to share with you with, uh, for Stash, which was our first um, tour, I'll mention it on Friday's Getting to Know You, okay? So anyway, as far as BFL, this here I just had a couple of little notes, but basically everything is going to be covered in other notes that I have. Again, I, please forgive me for reading. Mostly I can't remember all of this information, and I don't have a teleprompter yet. I can't wait to get one, but I don't have it yet. So, um, yeah. Oh, and I, I was wanting to tell you guys, I so desperately need to get something and I wanted you guys to remind me and now I forgot what it was. Ah, oh! and I forgot to write it down cause I just thought of it. Um, like a few minutes ago. Okay. If I happen to remember, I will ask you guys to remind me. So anyway, as far as BFL, BFL is blue face luster is how it is actually pronounced. It's spelled L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R, uh, but it's actually pronounced luster. From everything that I have read and anything that I've looked up, that's what everybody says is how it's pronounced. So uh, BFL is, um, well, actually, let me let me do this first i thought i put this in order so that i actually did this right but um okay so blueface lester hails from leicestershire in the english midlands as such it is pronounced blueface blueface lester you often see the name of both the sheep and its yarn abbreviated bfl so anytime you hear me talking about bfl that's what i'm referring to is this wool um <clears throat> and then of course calling it blue faced it's kind of a stretch. It's not blue, uh, but the sheep's face does appear to have like a blue tint uh, because of the dark skin beneath the short white hair. Uh, I've read that it is actually like a bluish tint versus black, but then I've also read that it is actually black. So I don't know for sure. I haven't seen one up close. <laughs> um, and you can also identify the uh, blue face Lester by the Rome, the curved Roman nose and the upright ears versus the Merino sheep, which is kind of puffy. Um, and I found this interesting. It doesn't have, uh, they have no wool on the head or neck. It's actually hair. So they have hair on the head and neck and then the rest of the body is wool. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then I, you know, I kind of like to know sometimes where things come from and so I figured I would share where the blue face luster originated um, oh yeah and and these are actually my notes so I don't know why I'm just not reading it but um, <laughs> given everything that I have heard and stuff about it about knitting with BFL I was actually surprised uh, to read that it was primarily bred for meat rather than wool which I found interesting uh, by the 18th century, England, formerly a powerhouse of wool production, was losing ground to Spain and its ridiculously soft, comically fuzzy merino sheep. English farmers thus pivoted from raising sheep from wool to raising them for their meat. 
at the time the longwood sheep had because it is a long wool sheep had good wool for spinning but was poor for meat production both because being small and not producing many lambs uh, there was a need for a sheep that could check both boxes hardy and meaty with a good fleece for spinning um what just happened oh there we go so in the 18th century robert blakewell of dishley uh, Leicestershire used selective breeding methods to develop a breed of sheep that yielded a good amount of meat and also produced a soft fleece. Uh, the de desired multipurpose sheep was the precursor to the blue-faced Leicester. Uh, this original Dishley Leicester sheep went through the several crossing breeding iterations, eventually becoming what we know as the blue-faced Leicester. And then in the early 1960s, the Blueface Lester Sheep Breeders Associated, or Association was formed to promote the breed. Now, it outside of being found in the UK, it's also found in the US and Canada. And um, I found it kind of interesting because they exported frozen semen from the United Kingdom and that's how they used it to expand the genetic diversity in Canada and the U.S. Uh, the breed is raised primarily, oh, I already did that. They primarily raised for meat. But that's how they have, that's how they've done it so that they can actually have them in the U.S. and Canada. And to be able to keep the herds growing is they transport frozen semen to do that. Um, and then BFL is, the, the BFL sheep have curly, fine lustrous wool uh which is one of the softest in the uk clip which i found interesting um and then i already told you they don't have wool on their head or neck they just have hair but uh let's see so some of the terminology that i will be using uh just so you are familiar with what i'm talking about staple length i think i may have gone through this with the merino i can't remember i know that was only two weeks ago but can't remember uh, staple length is the length of the individual fibers in a fleece. When the fleece is spun, the ends of each length of fiber are tucked in by the twist. If the staple length is shorter, their ends are more frequent. There are ends more frequently than a longer staple length fiber that leaves room for those ends to come loose more often, uh, resulting in a more worn look, which would be like pilling. So, you know, like the, if you certain items that you wear often sometimes pill and that's that you know that's how that happens uh bfl is classified as a long wool though it's on the shorter side of the long wool category meaning that it has a longer staple length compared to breeds in other categories then there's the micron count which measures the diameter of the fiber and in general the smaller the micron count the softer the fiber uh, the measurement comes into play when you think about the prickle factor of a yarn, basically how it feels next to our skin. Uh, the idea is that the fiber with a larger micron measurement, which makes it, it means it's thicker, doesn't bend as easily, so it is more likely to feel like it's poking your skin. So like the rougher wool that you feel that feels like scratchy or, you know, it's because of that. Uh, then you've got the crimp, which is the curl or waviness found in a lock of fiber. If a fleece has a fine crimp, meaning it's really wavy, then it is going to be a really bouncy yarn with a good amount of stretch and springiness back to its original shape. BFL locks look like little springs, uh, so it is very bouncy. <laughs> and then luster, of course, means how well fabric reflects light, like silk, for example, is very lustrous. Uh, and BFL also has a lot of luster uh, or a high luster versus Merino, which isn't quite as lustrous. Um, okay, so uh, some characteristic of the blue face luster. My lips feel very dry, even though I have lipstick on and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I keep like messing with my um, lips. So... Uh, Given that BFL began primarily to improve the meat production of the long wood wool sheep, it's surprising that it also produces a good fleece for making it into yarn. Um, I have heard of it described as shiny, lustrous, and even creamy uh, from having read different things. A uh, few characteristics uh, make it really pleasant. Uh, with a six inch staple, the blue faced Lester is considered long staple wool. 
Uh, that means that the clusters of fibers in its fleece are longer than average. Uh, the long staple length of the BFL makes it heavier and thicker. Uh, the resulting yarn can be spun into hard wearing garments like sweaters and other outerwear. Uh, however, the wool is not just strong, it's soft. The individual fibers of a blue faced luster sheep typically measure 24 to 28 microns in diameter. Uh, the lower the micron counter, the finer the wool. It's not as fine as merino, but the fleece is still plenty soft. So merino, and, and, and this isn't, do, I'm not doing a total comparison. That's actually going to be later on in the series, comparing not only BFL to merino, or merino to BFL, but comparing other wools to them. But um, merino tends to be a little softer than BFL. Now, I think I only have like maybe one or two hanks of BFL because I, I, I don't think I have yet found BFL in a local yarn shop from the tours that I've done. And if I did, it's in the video. So if I did see it at uh, Four Pearls, that's my bad. But I don't remember having seen it there. Um, I have found it online, and that's how I received the one or two that I have. Um, I did notice right off the bat that it's not as soft as any of the merinos that I've had. And I mean, some merino aren't seem to not be quite as soft as others of the hanks that I have. But the BFL, that is one of the things that I found. Uh, and I was going to get ahead of myself, but hold on. Finally, because the wool of the blue face luster is curled rather than crimped, the resulting fibers have good uh, good drape. <laughs> this means that the fabric you know you knit or crochet from BFL yarn will have more of the side more on the side of fluid rather than stiff. And that is something that I have heard. Now, not having worked with the BFL I have yet, I can't say that myself. But that is something I have heard and read a lot. Is that even though Merino softer, working with BFL, the ending project ends up having more drape oftentimes than Merino. Now, any items that I've made out of Merino, like the shawls that I've made have great drapes. So I'm really interested to see the difference between the Merino and BFL. And at whatever point that I end up working with the BFL and have a finished object to show you, I will definitely see if it's visible what the difference is in drape between the two projects. Uh, but in general, blue face Lester sheep produce white wool, but there are some with brown or black. A uh, yarn from blue face Lester wool tends to have a luster or shine to it. Um, I keep saying luster, don't I? As far as blue face Lester, <laughs> sorry, BFL. Well, I don't know why I didn't abbreviate that. That just would make it so much easier and I would have had so much less to actually right right all right anyway um what can you knit and crochet with blue face luster yarn or bfl uh given the soft and lustrous qualities what things can you um make with bfl because of the long staple length bfl yarn resists pilling um that means that you can make great outerwear like sweaters um socks gloves mittens uh, which are exposed to the elements and a lot of movement. Um, if you think about the underarm of your sweater that has a lot of, you know, there's friction and movement, uh, uh, sometimes it can pill. And that is something with Merino would p can pill more versus um, the BFL, Ow. which tends to resist pilling. Sorry, my hand is cramping from holding the papers. <laughs> However, because of its fineness, BFL yarn is sturdy without being itchy. Many people associate wool sweaters with itchiness, but many people say that BFL is soft enough to wear next to the skin. And that is totally the case with the two hanks that I have, even though it's not as soft, as, which you guys know I am obsessed with softness. Uh, the BFL, although doesn't didn't feel quite as soft as some of the merinos that I have, it was definitely soft and totally wearable. I mean, without a question. Uh, plus the drape of the BFL wool means that it will make drapey finished products like shawls, scarves, uh, knit or crochet with the yarn, and they will have a nice swing and fluidity to it um, rather than more structure, like a stand on its own type of a um, thing. So, uh, so yarn with BFL is really versatile. Uh, you can knit and crochet outer garments like heavy jumpers and stuff like a scarf um, or something like a scarf that sits next to the skin uh, of your neck. It's versatile and its versatility makes it an excellent workhorse yarn. And I have, I 
I have read in a couple of different places that uh, one person in particular said if she had to choose between only being able to work with Merino, whether Superwash or not, or BFL, for the rest of the, her knitting or crocheting life, she would choose BFL over Merino because of the versatility of being able to wear it for more um, like outer wear and stuff, but yet still be able to make items like shawls and scarves that you want to have the nice drape and stuff with. So uh, another place I read, somebody said that in wherever she was like in, I can't remember if she was doing like a craft show or something, but she was inside and it's a place that every year was the same place that they went to. And she said that when she was inside, she was always chilly and she took a shawl that she had made out of BFL. It was either shawl or sweater made out of BFL and she felt that she was warmer than when she would have used a merino item. So there are wools that are warmer than others like Icelandic wool is designed to be it's it's a much warmer wool but we'll we'll get into Icelandic wool and other wools and then of course with a comparison on like the differences between them we'll do that later down the series but that is the end of BFL as I said when I when I find my notes or if I look up again uh if there are major differences between Superwash BFL and Merino, then I'll let you know what whatever that difference is for Superwash BFL. Can't believe I couldn't find the notes. Uh, today has just been a crazy day and everything seemed to be going wrong leading up to doing my video. So I was getting very, I was either going to scream or cry. And I was just getting very frustrated, but it all ended up turning out to be fine. So I can't wait to hear. I know the video is longer, just like last Monday's. Mondays are going to tend to be a bit longer because we've got information about the stores, the tour, and then the wool or the fibers. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know um, if you have any questions, whether it's about the store, whether it's about BFL. Um, or just any questions in general. I can't wait to hear what your favorite parts of the tour were because I know that store is amazing. And um, yeah, just let me know. I, I really want to hear comments from you guys about the tour and BFL, etc. So I look forward to hearing what you have to say. And I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow night, Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern for our live and of course Miley can't wait to see you also because she missed you guys last week she says hi and bye to her peeps and um I will see you got well I'll read you guys tomorrow you guys will see me tomorrow um I hope you have a great rest of your day and that yeah just that you guys are staying safe healthy happy you guys are having a great 2021 so far I really pray for that and um, thank you all so incredibly much for all of your support. You guys are amazing. I love you all dearly. Love hugs and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those who need it. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. And I will see you guys tomorrow night. I don't think I forgot anything. I hope not. Oh, yeah, my mom says hi. And thank you again for all of the comments and, and thoughts for her as well as for myself and for Miley. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and I'll be right back with Local Yarn Shop Tour number two at for, for, la, la, okay, so, ow.